Now, can all of you view the presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, we we'll start with the Shanti Mantra. Om Purna Madaha Purna Midam Purna Purna Mudakshati Purnasya Purna Madare Purna Meva Abashishati Om Shanti Shanti Thank you. So we will uh, increasing antenna parameters in the part two of the presentation. So what we were looking at was directivity. And so uh, it does anybody have any questions or clarifications? What are you going to I think it is clear to most of you. So we'll just recap what we have covered yesterday and then carry on with the rest of the contents. So we'll start with directivity. So we looked into the definition of directivity. So directivity is basically the ratio of radiation intensity of a given antenna to, to that of the isotropic antenna. So isotropic antenna acts as a reference antenna. And uh, we know that directivity of isotropic antenna is P radiated by 4 pi. So directivity is given by this expression. Here it is worth remember, it is worth noting that the pattern, the directivity pattern and the radiation intensity pattern will be identical, except for the scaling factor. Other than the scaling factor, they will be identical. It's a dimensionless unit because it's ratios of power. Then we saw how directivity problem, how to calculate directivity given the exact expression. That is basically you calculate P radiated here. So the radiation intensity is given. So P radiated will be calculated. And uh, once you have calculated P radiated, you can calculate directivity. And very often if directivity direction is not specified, it is assumed that the directivity is in the direction of maximum radiation. Okay. And uh, what all we saw yesterday? So we took some problems and tried to solve how to try to find out how the directivity is calculated from the exact professor, professor, excuse me, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, regarding this example, uh, sometime we took uh, the equation uh, one square theta, and the uh, the other exam we took the power power radiation uh, intensity uh, sine theta. Just. What's the difference between sine square theta or sine theta? Okay, so you're asking what happens, why Why do we take some examples, we take sine square theta and some examples we take sine theta, right? Exactly, exactly, Professor. Yeah, so that the, the difference comes from the beam angle. So suppose you're designing an antenna and uh, let me show a polar plot. See, this expression here, this particular pattern is sine cube theta. Okay, if you make it sine power 4 theta or sine power 5 theta, this becomes narrower and narrower. So the beam width, half per beam width becomes narrower and narrower. Uh, whereas if you go for sine theta, this becomes broader and broader. So the beam width will becomes, beam width becomes broader. So basically these ex mathematical equations are approximations to a given radiation pattern, right? You have to express it in a 2D plot or a 3D plot using mathematical expression. So nearest approximation would be to go for uh, sine theta, sine square theta, sine cube theta, depending on what the beam width is, half per beam width of that pattern is, and how the shape resembles to the equation. So basically, you are expressing the radiation pattern in mathematical terms using sine cube theta or sine square theta, depending on the beam width. Does that answer the question? Yes, sir. That's the question. How we can just dis distinguish uh, this? It will be given at the text of the example or not? Or we, see, we have to guess? See, in, the, in most of the academic uh, problems, it will be given. In problems of academic interest, it will be given. In real example, in real world, in real world scenario, you will have a 2D plot from a 3D material studio, a 3D simulation studio. Okay, so from the 3D simulation tool, you will have a pattern and you'll have to do curve fitting for a given pattern to determine whether what is the power of n. 
we took one example also i think how to calculate n right suppose suppose i think one of the problem was here i'm sorry i'm going a little fast here so suppose if you know the half power beam width and you know it's an arm direction pattern we took an example how to calculate n correct yeah professor yeah so this is how we do it for the real world scenarios whereas for uh, academic problems of academic interest it will be given don't worry about it but in real world scenario that is more important than academic interest so in real world problem what to do is you do curve fitting or you calculate from half power beam width it is very difficult easy to determine half power beam width from a given pattern measurement pattern say once you have the half power beam width and you know it's an omnidirectional pattern you can calculate n if you know directional pattern you can still calculate n using the same uh, methodology so this is how you get the power of n whether it is sin k square theta or sin theta or sin cube theta uh, does it answer the question okay sir okay so we were uh, dealing with this problem and then uh, we went into directional pattern and omnidirectional pattern so in the directional pattern what we saw was there are three ways one is to calculate the relativity using the exact expression by solving this expression basically the radiation intensity into sin theta d theta d phi and uh, once you solve this double integral you get you can calculate the uh, relativity from exact expression or you can use cross approximation so the cross approximation requires you to calculate half power beam width in two orthogonal planes in a directional pattern so half power beam width in yz plane and half power beam width in xz plane so if you know the half power beam width in two orthogonal planes you plug in the values in this expression and you get the approximate relativity and similarly uh, type pareda expression also requires half power beam widths so once you know half power beam widths for a directional pattern you plug the values and you get the relativity okay and uh, so these are three methods of calculating the relativity exact expression cross method and type pareda method for directional patterns and we saw that for n is equal to 5 cross gives you minimum error whereas for a larger values of n that is if you go for arrays large number of arrays large element arrays in that case uh, the type pareda expression will be a very good approximation to calculate relativity quickly and the errors are very less if you see the directivity look at the error what you may get it in type error expression with that of the exact expression it's less than 0.1 db or 0.05 db so it's very good approximation for a very large element arrays even if you go for cross it is not much difference so your uh, difference is around 0.5 db at 29 db so your measurement accuracy itself will be 0.5 db at at around 30 db measurement values so it should be okay i think so in your practical applications quickly you can plug in the values for cross and type pareda and determine the directivity we took one example of how to use approximate expressions basically if the radiation intensity is given what we do is we calculate the half power beam width so once we know half power beam width we plug in the values in the expression and we get the value uh, and similarly for omni directional pattern uh, we can calculate directivity from the mathematical expression for sin power of n theta uh, we have two methods so either direct method or direct exact expression or macdonald's method or poisson method here there is only one cross section either exact plane or yz plane because of symmetry it will be identical uh, you will have to calculate half power beam width in that cross section in the single one in the Single cross section pattern, 2D plot. Once you have the half power beam width, plug in the values and you can calculate the directivity. It is much more accurate here. It is reasonably very good accurate. So there is only 0.2 degree variation uh, between the exact expression and the approximate expressions. So it's a good approximate expression. You can quickly use approximate expressions and uh, calculate the directivity for a first hand calculation. and we took one example as well uh, we have seen this example and uh, yes any doubts any clarifications any discussions you want to have in yesterday's class no okay uh, so i think you would have already gone through this in the material once again and uh, we will take some other examples also 
and try to solve some tutorial examples and uh, become much more familiar with the uh, methodology of solving the problems. Next, let us go to antenna efficiency. A very important topic. Uh, antenna efficiency, the total antenna efficiency is used to account uh, the losses at the input terminals and within the structure. So basically, if you feed an antenna some power, not all of the power gets radiated, right? So some power it gets reflected back and because of the impedance mismatch between the antenna and the transmission line. And some power gets lost because of dissipative losses or the uh, heat losses, uh, thermal losses coming from conduction loss. It goes into the transmission. So not all the power gets radiated. That's, that's a that's a summary. So what happens? So let us take some references. So this is an antenna. This is say a schematic for an antenna. You have the antenna terminals here, input terminals of the antenna here, and this, and you have the output terminals of the antenna here. So this is where the directivity reference is. So what do you mean by directivity reference? In the direct Professor, excuse me. Can you slow down a little bit, please? Yes, yes, I will. So what do we mean by uh, directivity reference? Sorry, I'm going a little bit. Yeah. So here, when we say 4 pi u, the radiation intensity to be radiated, we mean radiated power. So what do you mean by directivity reference? Is that this power radiated is basically from the output terminals of the antenna. So P radiated is from the output terminals of the antenna. So this output terminal is basically the directivity reference. Okay, so P radiated is calculated from here. So you take the spherical surface integral or the surface integral from here onwards. So that gives you the P radiated. So the output directivity reference is of the output terminals. This is the input terminal to the antenna and this is the transmission line. So now when you feed some power here, P I would like to say P available. Okay, I should have written it down here. It is P available here. That available power from say power amplifier comes to the transmission line and gets reflected because of the impedance mismatch between the antenna and the transmission line. There is no, they don't be perfect match, right? However hard we try, they won't be a perfect match. So there will always be some reflection. So that reflected power there will be some reflection power. So the rest of the power, I would like to call it as P in. Okay, so P in is what goes into the antenna terminals, input terminals of the antenna. So the input power, not all of it gets radiated, not all of it becomes P radiated. There will be some losses, the conduction losses and the directed losses. So that's what I meant to say. So you have P available here and that P available power a part of it gets reflected because of the impedance mismatch between the antenna and the transmission line. And rest of that rest of the power that is P in whatever goes into the antenna P in. Not all of it gets radiated. There will be conduction loss because there will be uh, the current densities along the metal. There will be metallic surfaces in the antenna and there will be current density. So I square R conductor conduction losses will come into the picture. And there will be tan delta, there will be a dielectric material, if not vacuum. So that dielectric material will also have some tan delta loss tangent. So that also leads to direct dielectric losses. So there will be conductive losses and there will be dielectric losses. And then the P in becomes P radiated. So that is what is reflected, uh, radiated, and that is what is counted for directivity. So the directivity reference is here. Okay, it's very important. This diagram is very important. So what, what does the antenna efficiency include? So the antenna efficiency includes the reflection efficiency. What we meant here was the reflection part. And it includes conduction efficiency because there will be metallic surfaces and there will be current densities and that leads to I square R losses. So that means conduction losses. And it includes dielectric efficiency. So the loss is coming from the loss tangent of the dielectric material used within the antenna. So if you use a PCB antenna, so the PCB substrate loss tangent or uh, tan delta comes into the dielectric loss. Now, it is very important that in measurement, not in simulation, 
in measurement it is very difficult to distinguish the conduction losses and the dielectric losses it's not easy to distinguish between them so generally they are grouped together it is very easy to distinguish between uh, to separate to calculate the reflection loss as we will see later on but it is very difficult to distinguish between the conduction losses and the dielectric losses hence they are grouped together and referred to as radiation efficiency okay so ecd is a radiation efficiency so the total efficiency includes the reflection efficiency and the ecd or the radiation efficiency so what is reflection efficiency we know that the reflection coefficient is gamma from your engineering electromagnetics it's already clear to all of you so the power reflected is gamma in square correct this is all of you know this i think you have taken engineering electromagnetics or you have taken microwave engineering subject you will all be aware of this so the reflected part of the power is gamma in square so what is the power transmitted then it is 1 minus gamma in square this comes from the lossless condition right from the unitary matrix s into s transpose transpose conjugate will be unitary so the rest of the power basically this power is reflected power gamma in magnitude square will be the reflected power and the transmitted power will be 1 minus mod of gamma in square so the total efficiency is then given by the reflection efficiency given by this expression and the radiation efficiency which is which consists of two components conduction and dielectric efficiencies okay so what is reflection efficiency we will have a look at uh, reflection efficiency so if you have a transmission line and then you have an antenna so the, the load impedance of the antenna is z in so you call it as z in as the input impedance of the antenna so if you know the z in so the reflection coefficient or the gamma in is basically z in minus zc by z in plus zc right this is very much i think all of you know this uh, there is not much you don't have to spend much time on this you already are aware of how we get this from transmission line equations uh you you know z in minus zc by z in plus zc don't forget this relationship it's very important in rf and micro engineering it should be at the tip of your tongue when you are rf and micro engineering doing rf and micro engineering okay so that's the reflection coefficient how to get reflection coefficient if you know the input impedance of the antenna and transmission line characteristic impedance once you know the reflection coefficient you can calculate the radiation reflection efficiency from 1 minus mod of gamma in square so that's the reflection efficiency reflection coefficient sometimes bswr is given in data sheets they don't give you the reflection efficient the reflection coefficient they give you the bswr of an antenna it is 2 around 0.5 something like that they give so in that case this is the expression for calculating reflection coefficient from bswr so this all we are all familiar with this so i don't go in much detail into this okay so that was regarding antenna efficiency so you know how to calculate the antenna efficiency given ecd and e reflection coefficient or zd so if you know zd you can calculate gamma in once you know gamma in uh, you can calculate reflection efficiency once you know reflection efficiency and ecd you can calculate the total efficiency it's nothing but the product of radiation efficiency and the reflection efficiency okay next we go to another important parameter gain and realized gain they both are slightly different from each other uh, probably long time back people were used to use only realized gain now ieee has made it kind of uh, convention to use gain separately from realized gain you will see both of them and it becomes very clear to you once you know antenna efficiency and reactivity of uh, both of them are very clear to you so what is gain gain is basically the ratio of radiation intensity of a given antenna to that of the isotropic antenna if the power accepted by the antenna were radiated isotropically so what do you mean by that okay so what was directivity so directivity was ratio of the radiation intensity of an antenna to that of the isotropic antenna right and what was the reference for p radiated p radiated reference was here at the output terminals of the antenna gain says okay i am interested in the input terminals of the antenna i am not interested in the output terminals of the antenna i know i am very I, it's very clear to me what the input terminals of the antenna is in a real application so can you tell me can you relate uh, the power radiated the radiation intensity 
to the power that is that is received at the input terminals of the antenna. That's what the gain says. So it's the radiation intensity ratio of radiation intensity of a given antenna to that of the isotropic antenna if the power received from the antenna that is p in was radiated okay whereas if you take p radiated that becomes directivity so the reference becomes output terminals for gain the reference becomes input terminals instead of p radiated it is received power or p in so what is gain so the gain is radiation intensity to that of the total input power or total accepted power into 4 pi right so this is nothing but the isotropic radiation intensity of an isotropic antenna if all the power were radiated whatever the accepted power were radiated by the isotropic antenna so this is expression for gain it is very much similar to directivity except that instead of radiated power now it is accepted power or the total input power to the antenna terminals input terminals not available power okay available power is something different from the input power just to reiterate before we get lost somewhere this is available power whatever power is totally available from a power amplifier that's available power some part of it gets reflected back and whatever enters into the input terminals of the antenna is accepted power or input power and whatever is radiated becomes the radiated power okay so these are the three nomenclatures available power uh, input power radiated power okay so so this is a definition of the gain so gain is very much it looks very much similar to directivity except that instead of radiated power we have the input power but input power is related to radiated power through what radiation efficiency right so we have seen that in the efficiency so if you have an input power not all of it gets radiated there will be losses and that loss is conduction loss and directive loss so ecd ECT that is the efficient radiation efficiency into the input power is the radiated power right okay so radiated power is the ECD into input into input power so this diagram should be should come to your mind if this diagram is there in your mind it becomes very simple okay so we have input power is radiated power by ECD so if you plug in the values for input power P radiated by ECD ECD into 4 pi U by P radiated. So this is nothing but your directivity. So you can relate gain to directivity through radiation efficiency. So this is a very important relationship. So the gain is related to directivity through ECD. That makes sense, right? So that makes sense because from here you are moving to this reference and the efficiency that is accounted for is the radiation efficiency, not the reflection efficiency. To account for reflection efficiency, you have to move here. So that will be what realized gain is basically anyways. So this is clear from this. Uh, so the, keep this diagram in your mind. So it becomes very clear. So the gain is radiation efficiency into directivity. Okay. So I would like to emphasize it once again that the gain is radiation efficiency into a directivity. Radiation efficiency consists of two components, conduction efficiency and directive efficiency. It's once again a dimensionless unit because it's ratios of power. You can express that in terms of logarithm, 10 logarithm to base 10. You can express it in uh, summation of logarithm of individual components. This is a very, very much common. And it's very basic, so you will be aware of all this. Okay. Next comes the realized gain. So what we discussed so far is the gain. What we are going to discuss now is the realized gain. Realized gain says, okay, I was moving at the input terminals of the antenna. So from so if I am if my reference is output terminal of the antenna, it is directivity. Now I came to input terminals of the antenna and accounted for the losses within the antenna, the conduction loss and the directive losses. So now I am talking of gain. What if I want what if I want to what if my reference goes at the input terminals of the transmission line? So there's a transmission line. And then there's an antenna. So my reference is now moving towards the transmission line. Now I should account for the reflection losses also. That is my reflection efficiency also comes into the picture. So realized gain does not, see the gain does not account for the impedance mismatch, whereas the realized gain accounts for the reflection or the mismatch, impedance mismatch. So what is realized gain? Realized gain is a total efficiency to the directivity. So it includes both reflection losses as well as conduction and directive losses. 
so this suppose if it was only conduction losses and direct activity it would have become gain now by incorporating the reflection losses we we are now talking about realized so it is generally denoted by gre realized gain so rest of them we are all aware of this what each individual term means so it's very important to remember here now so directivity is here the reference of the antenna is here gain reference is here input terminus of the antenna whereas the realized gain reference is here input terminal of the transmission line including the antenna system so that becomes the realized gain okay so is it clear up to here or you want me to repeat it once again because it is very important before taking a problem i would like to i would like everybody to become familiar with this uh, keywords these are very important keywords is this clear any doubts any clarifications difference between gain and realized gain difference between directivity and gain so is this clear just remember or uh, just try and make a note of this diagram it becomes very clear to all of you what is and where the references are output terminals in the directivity in Am I audible? Audible, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I get lost. I think I got lost in the internet connection. So where did I get lost? There at the diagram. So did you uh, all of you came to know what real age gain is? Sir, I had a query, sir. Uh, yes, please. Yes, sir. Correct me if I'm wrong, sir. Actually, I had a doubt. Uh, like you said, two efficiencies, sir. Radiation efficiency and the reflection efficiency. Yes, please. In reflection efficiency, we account for the reflection coefficient, sir. Correct. So radiation efficiency, sir, uh, it is more or less of a like a like the transmitted power. This more. Can you repeat it once again? I didn't get it uh, correctly. Can you repeat it in a different way? Sir, the radiation efficiency which is a uh, combination of the conductive losses and the dielectric uh, losses sir yes it is more of the transmitted uh, efficiency we can uh, consider it yes both of them are transmitted efficiency both of them are kind of transmitted efficiency uh, yes you are right we can consider it as transmitted efficiency it basically says how much lossy my antenna is how much thermal dissipation basically it accounts for thermal dissipation right Yes, sir. I mean, See, how much of is uh, transmitted, sir? Yes, how much of the power is transmitted? See, you can improve your reflection efficiency. How how can you improve your reflection efficiency? By impedance uh, matching, sir. Perfect. By impedance matching, you can improve your ref uh, reflection efficiency. Can you do anything about uh, radiation ef uh, radiation efficiency? Sir, that is what my question was. Sir, like uh, since we took the uh, reflection coefficient into account, sir. Uh, Shouldn't we take the transmission coefficient also into account uh, while we are considering the radiation efficiency? Sorry, I didn't get it. Please repeat it once again. So should we take the transmission coefficient into account when we are uh, when taking the radiation efficiency, sir? So in the radiation efficiency, right? Yes, sir. So you are telling should we take S two one into account? Yes, sir.
Yes, Harish. Yeah. I was thinking I am lost. No, actually, sir, I told me uh, he has been disconnected. He'll be joining shortly, so kindly wait. Okay. Okay.
Hello, uh, can can uh, can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, Professor Gorish called. There is some uh, uh, land problem in his office, so he will not be able to take the class today. He said he will cover up the portion on Monday. So uh, we can end the meeting here. See you on Monday then. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, we will resume the class. Thank you.